Hey, how's it going? Mr. Bill here today, and today I'm going to show you how to split up your frequencies using an audio effect track and EQs and stuff to to uh, affect different frequency bands differently. Um, but I'm not going to do this the regular way. So first of all, I'll show you the regular way. Um, I'm just going to drop an EQ into this channel, and I'm going to put it in a rack by pressing Command G, and then I'm going to open up this audio effect track, and uh, we have a chain here. Basically, these chains in audio effect tracks is that you can treat it like a little mixer. So if we create another chain, you can picture that you have two channels of a mixer with the same signal going through it. And um, I'm just going to name one of these low and the other one high. And on the low, um, I'm going to cut everything except the low frequencies at about 250 hertz. And on the highs, I'm going to cut everything above 250 hertz. So what we've done there is we've we've split up the low and high frequencies so we can solo each of these and listen to them so this is lows and this is highs and um, what I'm going to do is uh, put a flanger or any sort of effect after the highs and, and we can affect both frequencies differently so I can just distort the low frequencies if I want to so I'll put an overdrive after this so the idea is basically just splitting up frequency bands so that you can uh, EQ them differently and, and stuff like that. But the problem with doing it this way is, um, is the way EQs work. Uh, if we're cutting at 250 hertz, we're actually taking 3 dB out of 250 hertz, and then we're not actually cutting the frequency until about almost 600 hertz. Um, and we're only taking about 6 dB out of 400 hertz and uh, 500 and, uh, 12 dB out of about 540 hertz. Um, and then with the highs, if we're cutting at 250 hertz, we're only taking 3 dB out of that as well. So what you end up getting is something like this. If I put an EQ after it and I go 250 hertz and just take a little cut out, you're basically creating a dip in your spectrum like that. And you don't want to do that, so one way to fix it is to bring one of those frequencies back and the other one forward a little bit. But it still sounds weird, so if we listen to without the splitting of the frequencies, you can hear that it's taking a cut out of the mids a little bit. I'll just play them again. So it's, it's taking a little dip out of some of the frequencies and we don't want to do that, we want to try and keep it uh, as, as natural sounding as possible so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop an audio effect track in and uh, just open up the chain section and create two chains and I'm going to call one low and one high um, and what we're going to do here is the same as before, we're just going to put a, an EQ in the lows and cut them at 200 hertz but then what we're going to do with the highs is we're also going to cut at 200 hertz, so we're still leaving all the lows in. So at the moment, the high channel just has this in it, which is definitely not high frequencies, it's low frequencies. And then I'm going to press Command G on this EQ, so I'm going to create another rack with inside this rack, and I'm going to call this chain EQ, and then I'm going to create another chain, and I'm going to call this dry. And what I'm going to do in this dry channel is put a utility in there, and I'm going to put these out of phase with these. So basically what's happening is um, we're putting a signal, we're layering two signals together. One of the signals has all the frequencies in it and one of the signals only has low frequencies in it. So what's going to happen is when we put those out of phase, it's going to phase out those low frequencies and just leave high frequencies, which should sound like this. And now we have both our frequency bands split up like this. So if we listen to it without the effect rack, it sounds a bit more together. It doesn't sound as cut out as the as the one where we just use the EQs. Um, so so basically, what what's happening? Um, if I just I'll turn this rack off and I'll create another rack. And I'll create a chain, and I'll just call it uh, phase test or something. Doesn't really matter. And then within that, uh, 
Actually, I'll, I'll just create two two chains within this. I'll call one AQ and I'll call the other one dry. And then what I'm going to do on the dry channel again is put it out of phase, and we get complete silence. So what's happening is we're we're putting two signals that are the exact same out of phase. Um, to show you what I mean even more, I'm just going to bounce this quickly. Let's call it base. Take the input from build base and just bounce a quick little section of it. Oh, whoops, I'm going to have to turn this off, otherwise we'll get nothing. Cool, so we have uh, one base bounce here. You can barely see it, so I'll just turn it up a little bit. And then I'm going to duplicate this and solo both of them. And I'm going to put one out of phase with the other. So utility, put it out of phase. And then I'm going to flatten this track, so freeze it. Basically, freezing and flattening just renders the track into audio offline, and then you can just flatten it straight out into audio rather than recording it in real time. So that's frozen, and I go flatten. And then if we have a look at these waveforms, you can see as one of the waveforms goes up, the other one goes down, and then as that one comes back up, the other one goes down. So they're doing the exact opposite things, which means they're 100% out of phase. So if we listen to this, we get absolutely nothing. But if we put this signal back out of phase with itself again, and then freeze it, and flatten it, so now we're putting it back in phase, and then we get signal again. So basically what, that's the, the same concept that we're doing in this base, but but we're doing it with just frequencies. So, uh, whoops, I'll just create that rack again, I just deleted that. Um, so I'll create two chains, I'll call one EQ and one dry, and then on the dry, put the utility on and put it out of phase with itself. So at the moment we had what we had just before, where you get absolutely nothing, but if we put an EQ on this EQ channel, and we start cutting frequencies out of it, so I'll just start cutting frequencies out of 500 hertz slowly. You can see as I as I start to cut out those frequencies, it starts to add more of those frequencies. So at the moment we get nothing, and then say we cut the lows, we just start to get the low frequencies, and the more we cut, the more we'll get. So it's, it's working the opposite way to the way we're usually used to seeing filters work. For instance, just then that sounded like we were going like this, but we're actually cutting rather than rather than letting more frequencies in we're cutting more frequencies out and um, <clears throat> the thing that's better about this is the the accuracy of, of the frequencies that you're adding back in so for instance before we looked at how we were cutting 250 Hertz on the lows and highs and it was leaving a bit of a dip in the middle whereas if we do it this way um, because the phasings pretty accurate, then um, it's going to add the, exa the, the exact right amount of frequencies that we need back into our signal. So uh, here it's cutting at 169 hertz, but it's cutting 169 hertz at 3 dB, so it's going to add 3 dB more of that signal in. And then it's cutting uh, at about 100 hertz by about 8 dB, so it's going to add 8 dB of 100 hertz in, and so on. So like down here at, at around 66 hertz, it's going to add you know, 18, 18 dB more of that signal in roughly. And, and that's what makes it a bit more accurate than doing it the other way. So here, we're actually adding, if we're cutting at 200 hertz on this high channel, and we're cutting at 200 hertz on this low channel, we're, we're actually adding the exact right amount of high frequencies back in because we're, we're adding this 200 hertz by 3 dB back in because it's phased out with the original. So, so it's, just, it's just a more accurate way, basically, of splitting up your frequencies. <laughs> So you can't hear like too much of a difference, whereas if you do it the other way you can hear a big cut in the um <clears throat> in the mids. So here's an example of where I've done that exact same thing, but um I've EQ'd it pretty heavily and then put that same sort of um idea into practice with the EQ'd signal out of phase with itself and then done some weird things with the EQ and distorted it and added a huge amount of effects and I've ended up getting this. <laughs> So 
so yeah, it's a pretty nice way of cutting out your frequencies. I think it sounds a little better personally, but it's up to you how you do it, I guess. And um, yeah, so cheers for watching. Hopefully you got something out of that. And yeah, go to mrbillstunes.com. Catch you later.